When you first start the resource, it would look something like this. And of course, there's nothing stopping you just clicking on the mass and dragging it up to the spring, and pulling down to stretch the spring and then releasing the, the, the button and watching the oscillations. And over on the left hand side, you, you can see all the energies. But things happen so quickly, it's difficult to see what's going on. So what I like to do is to press the pause button. And that just allows me to set the system up exactly the way I want before pressing play and watching everything run. So with the pause button press, now I can pull my spring down to wherever I like. And when I release, it just stays there because the simulation isn't running. It's sort of frozen, if you like. And this allows me to get my energy graph looking exactly the way I want it to. On the right hand side here, the tallest bar is the total energy of the system. And the only problem is it's not making the best use of the scale. I can change that by zooming in on the chart by pressing this plus button. And if you go too far, you'll see a little arrow at the top of the bar. And this indicates that your bar has simply gone off the top of the chart. So you may want to pull it back a little bit. And to fine tune, the scale you can you can pull you you weight up and down to increase or decrease the total energy of your system so you can get exactly where you want i'm gonna i'm gonna put it there now incidentally with the system paused it's a it's a good way to talk about the uh, the potential energies because there's no movements you don't have to consider the kinetic energy you don't have to consider uh, energy that's been lost to heat so you can just look at uh, this bar which is the gravitational potential energy of the mass and the bar next to it this one is the elastic potential energy of the spring due to the fact it's been stretched or compressed and just looking at the, the gravitational potential energy for a minute you can see that it has its maximum value at the top and it's going to have its minimum value at the at the bottom oops let's put the mass back on somewhere there and before I talk about the elastic potential energy, we have some markers to help us discuss this over here on the right hand side. There's one marker which uh, shows you the natural length of the spring. So this line here is the natural length of the spring, where the spring would be without a mass on it. So if I take the mass off, you can see that's where the, where the spring is. So I put the mass back on and stretch down this green arrow shows me how much the, uh, the, the spring has, has been uh, extended. It's the extension of the spring. Another useful line is the mass equilibrium line. This shows us where the system would come to rest when all the kinetic energy is damped out of the system and the mass has stopped moving. Incidentally, it's also the point about which the mass oscillates. And there's another useful line, it's just called a movable line. You can put it where you want. But I think it's really useful to put it down there to show your maximum amplitude, to show where you started. So uh, if you put damping into the system, you can see that the oscillations decrease, but you're always able to see where you started. So that's, that's another useful line. So as I said, in this pause state, it's a useful state just to look at the, uh, the different energies, different potential energies, because nothing's moving. And now you can see that my elastic potential energy is at a maximum because the spring is uh, extended by its largest amount. And then as we move the mass up, we can see that when we get to the natural length of the spring, we've got, there's no elastic potential energy. And then as the spring is compressed you can see the elastic potential energy increasing again so just a reminder that having things paused is a good way just to look at the potential energies in the system let's put things back down there and now let's run things i'm going to start off with no damping so let's uh, press play and the animation runs but and you can see uh, how the different energies are being transferred between one and another and you can see how the total energy isn't changing but it's happening so quickly that it's difficult to see what's going on 
So perhaps the most important function you have on the simulation is this button here, which says slow. And when you click that, everything slows down and you've got a chance of talking about it. So you can see now, if we're looking at the kinetic energy, it reaches a maximum as the mass passes through the mass equilibrium line. And it has a minimum at the top of the motion and the bottom of the motion. You can see the potential energy reaching a maximum at the top of the motion and reaching a minimum at the bottom of the motion. And you can see the elastic potential energy reaching a maximum at maximum extension, going through a minimum at the natural length and having some energy when it's compressed, when it goes above the natural length of the spring. And you'll notice that because there's no damping, the amplitude of the oscillations is remaining unchanged. The mass is always eating, reaching this point that we showed with our movable line. So let's see what happens if we add a little bit of damping to the system now. And now you can see the thermal energy growing. And what I like about this is the thermal energy increases most quickly when the kinetic energy is at its maximum. And that makes sense because the only form of damping in this simulation is due to air resistance. And air resistance depends on the velocity squared. Now, there are many other things you can alter with the simulation. You can change the mass, you can change the spring constant, you can change gravity. There are presets, we're looking at Earth at the moment, but there are others. And of course, you can change the amount of damping in the system. If, and you can do that dynamically. If I change it now, let's damp out the motions altogether. And you can see the, the system coming to rest about the mass equilibrium line. Now, as you can see, this is a, an incredibly powerful simulation and it has all the functions you would want to do an investigation into uh, the mass on the spring system in a gravitational field with or without damping. All in all, I think it's incredibly useful to, for showing the energy stores and transfers in a mass on the spring system.